Welcome to Type C Tech Reviews. Today, I'm gonna be unboxing the Scepter C40, a 40 inch gaming monitor. And at any point during the video, you wanna check out this exact same monitor. There's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But let's get this thing unboxed. All right, so this comes in a huge box, borderline TV size. So let's cut these straps and then cut open the top. This thing actually looks, I know when you talk about a $600 monitor, you don't think budget, but yeah, this could be pretty budget for a 40 inch monitor. A lot of those can be quite expensive, well over a thousand dollars. So this might be a really good way if you want a 40 inch monitor and a gaming monitor at that. All right, so inside the box is another box. And then here is the actual monitor box. Then this opens like any other typical scepter monitor. And then opening up the C40, it comes in a big thing of styrofoam. So let's actually pull this out. So laying this down, they give you a little handle. And then there it is all pulled out. And again, this is part of their Nebula line. So everything is gonna be white. Here is a cable cover for the back, a little more premium. Then you have the big, I mean, this is a massive, just an absolutely massive height adjustable stand right here. It looks like it's all lock into, which is really good. And it also looks like it has right there swivel, which is pretty cool. There's some plastic on the back right here and it's nice gloss black on the back. And this is a lock-in stand as you can see right there. Also in the box, we have a manual and you even get a remote with this monitor and some batteries, a screwdriver, a white display port cable, the power cord, and then you get an adapter for vase mounting. So you actually will have to put this adapter on if you want to vase mount something, which is not a big issue. And they even give you some gloves. They tell you to use these while assembling them. We're not going to do that, but you definitely can. It's kind of cool. All right, then taking that off, you can see this is the absolutely massive monitor. This kind of looks funny, it's so big. All right, so how we're gonna do this is we're just going to pull that open right there. Also in the box, we have the absolutely massive, everything about this monitor is massive, the legs for the monitor. This is all solid metal, obviously, with a monitor this big and heavy, you absolutely need that. Now to install this, it is not one thumb screw, it's actually three screws that you gotta put in. All of that, you can see, that's all metal. This is all metal inside of there. So you actually need to screw in three different screws, which you can see they give you right here. Use the included screwdriver and they're even white to match, which is pretty cool. And all you gotta do is just screw those into the bottom there. And there we go. Now that the stand is all put together, this thing is strong and I like that it's all white. We're just gonna clip it into the back of this monitor. Pretty sure that that's clipped in. Let's get this up. Oh, this is very heavy. And there it is. This thing is super heavy and massive. All right, taking the plastic off, this monitor is absolutely massive. Now, the first thing that I actually notice is this is not, it doesn't look like it's a matte finish at all, which I actually don't mind. Typically displays that are not matte finish are actually a little bit brighter. So yeah, this is a kind of more glossy finish, kind of like a MacBook Pro. This is borderline the size of a TV. Um, the stand actually feels really nice and solid. Uh, you have height adjustability, which is quite easy to operate. Let's flip this thing around. Let's go over the ports. Pretty simple, two HDMI 2.0s, two DisplayPort 1.4s, and then a three and a half millimeter audio out, and that's it. Uh, you do have some RGB right here along the back. Don't know how bright or not that's gonna be. However, on one of the other receptor monitors, it was pretty bright. So let's, uh, let's get this thing hooked up and then do a gaming and a ghosting test. All right, guys, now that it is all hooked up, there's a couple things right away that I don't like. One, this remote is pretty dang cheap. And for a $600 monitor, I would say either include a remote or just don't include one. But if you're gonna include one, make it a little bit nicer. It's just kind of cheapy, but I guess it's there if you want it. I will say a thing that I do like is they do have just the joystick down here, which is what I've been wanting them to do for a long time. They put it on, I think they're doing it on all of their Nebula monitors, which is why this is all white and everything looking cool. But let's turn this thing on, check out the menu, and then we're gonna do a gaming test. There we go. This thing is absolutely massive. It's kind of crazy. And there we go, just absolutely massive. Okay, so going right into display settings, we're going to, it's at 1440p right now, and it's doing 165 hertz. Let's go into NVIDIA control panel and see if this can output 10 bits of color, and it can output 10 bits of color, very good. Now we'll say the curve, obviously it's a 3000 R curve. This thing is barely curved, it's pretty much flat. I mean, as you can see here, it curves a tiny bit, but it's extraordinarily minimal but not a problem at all. Right off the bat, I will say uh, matte displays are never going to be as vibrant as more glossy displays. That's just how it is. And this panel is extraordinarily vibrant. It's very bright. It's beautiful. Reflections are more of a thing here, but I do really like that it's glossy. I've always preferred glossy screens over matte screens. If you're in like a gaming room environment, if you're right next to a window, obviously it doesn't make sense, but let's go through the settings really quick with this joystick that I do like. We're gonna go down to picture. So it's currently only on 80% backlight, so it's not at full brightness. So we're gonna set this over RTS, FPS, Eco, Movie, 
user. We're gonna go up to user and turn this thing all the way up. Wow, this thing gets super bright. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming probably 400 nits, 450 nits of brightness, something around that. Then going down to color, we have all you can change your red, green, and blue, magenta, cyan, whatever you want. You can change your gamma, tint, saturation. And then going into settings, we have FreeSync Premium, which we are gonna to wanna to turn on. The overdrive, which is basically response time setting, is on medium. There is medium, high, off, low, and then it continues. Then you also have the back cover light, which is basically the RGB back there. Get it back there. Right now it's on Spectrum. Then you can change it over to user and do a bunch of different stuff. So that is on Spectrum, which will basically do like the RGB rainbow effect. Now I'm not sure if this actually has a built-in speaker system. So we're gonna test that right now. Yeah, so it does actually have a built-in speaker system, which it's not bad. It just does not get very loud. This is the max. It's actually pretty clear, but again, not super loud. But let's launch in Warzone and see how this thing games. All right guys, dropping right in. First, first thing you noticed, absolutely massive. Haley said this didn't really look as big as it actually is, uh, but this thing, oh, it is just huge. Incredibly immersive. I don't mind that it's not incredibly curved, um, although it would be very cool if it had like a massive curve, like a 1000 R curve. That would be insane, but Obviously, this is still fairly budget um, for what it is. One thing right off the bat, this is a VA panel, right? And this has fantastic blacks. Like this is, the screen's on obviously, very deep blacks, beautiful overall picture. And I actually really like that they don't have it a matte display because this really is trying to be a very gaming oriented, beautiful picture, huge monitor screen. I think really they pulled it off really well. I'm quite impressed with the panel. The panel is extraordinarily vibrant, quite clear, clearer than I was expecting as it only being 1440 at this screen size. The picture is absolutely beautiful. All right, now, especially when we get to these green areas, I mean, the map is so vibrant. Also, I have just been reviewing a 32 inch monitor and those monitors are just big. Even coming from a 32 inch monitor, this thing is absolutely massive. I know on camera, it's always gonna make it seem smaller than it is. This thing is huge. I have a 72 inch desk and it makes it look like I need a bigger desk. Now, one thing I am really interested in is if this has a lot of ghosting or not, because as being a pretty budget-oriented uh, monitor for this size, obviously this is not a budget monitor, this is quite a premium monitor, but being budget for the size, you know, how much ghosting is this gonna have? We're definitely gonna have to see how that is. But yeah, from the gaming experience, oh, it is absolutely amazing. But yeah, now we did some gaming and yeah, I am really impressed with this monitor. There's not a ton of 40 inch gaming monitors out there, but the ones that are out there are quite expensive. This one, definitely not too expensive. Kind of like price of like a GP850. I think this is around just 580, 550 or something like that. But now let's do the ghosting test because that's gonna be a huge tell if you guys want to buy this or not buy it for gaming. All right, so right off the bat, without messing with the response time settings, there is quite a bit of ghosting, uh, which I kind of expected as being a pretty budget monitor. We're actually gonna use the remote to change the response time settings. Okay, so going down into system and then overdrive, it is currently on high. We're gonna change it to off, low, medium, high. Now I gotta say, uh, high definitely decreases it a little bit from medium, off, and low. However, the ghosting, it's there. Uh, now, whether that is a deal breaker for you or not, the panel is gorgeous there is definitely quite a lot of ghosting. Uh, this is probably, yeah, definitely on the worst side of ghosting for VA panels. Although again, we did kind of expect that at this price point. However, if you're someone who doesn't really pick up on ghosting, or if you play more games like Red Dead Redemption, or if you play faster games, not intensely, this could still be a good monitor, but definitely check out the full review as I will do more tests. This is only the unboxing and initial impressions. But again, if you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I do got you guys. But again, subscribe below, and this is Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.